his head, and there he goes. Abyss gonna clean him up. Olaf goes down. Everyone's just gonna line up here for Lazzy. He's gonna find himself the Quadra. I give it to him. That's a kill. Grizzly with the quad feet gets the ace. Available just spin to win all over. That game was insane. Welcome back to Nepal for this second matchup here in the Cheez-Its Invitational for College Esports. Of course, my name's Dan Banner, also known as Mr. Danners. Thank you for sticking around during that long break there. But all of round two here is now finally about to get underway. This time, of course, our St. Clair Saints are up against the Miami University of Ohio, currently fifth seed here in this tournament. And looking forward to see this action in hand compared to what we saw him last time by. Of course, this time St. Clair going to be on the yellow side. And it is, of course, going to be same squad. No substitutions here. Tanking is going to be Apostle and G-Scales. Supporting is going to be 9 Narjunk. And on DPS, we got Bailable and Kale. Meanwhile, on the side of Miami University of Ohio, the Red Hawks, we do have Kabunga and Heartache on the tank line. We have Excel and CSAC on DPS. Jaybird and Quinku going to be the support line there for Miami University of Ohio as we ride along here with Apostles. We try to get in to this first initial capture section, which is always a rather tough section to try and breach into. Lots of open space, not very many spots to hide and actually like, get any sort of capture in. That being said, though, Saints were able to capture it for the first second, and we do see the side of Miami University of Ohio. They breached in. They've got it captured for themselves now. Saints, however, taking the long way around. Rather than just trying to go for the point, they are trying to go for the kill. And they're going to charge on through. G Scale is going to get into the swing of things and find himself an elimination onto Heartache. Apostle leading the charge with the rest of the squad as well. Someone's kind of stuck in the corner. They're not going to be long for this world. That is going to be the May on the side. It's going to be CSAC. He does have his ultimate around the corner, actually. G Scale is coming in hot. And actually, there's going to be a double boop coming out here from Jaybird. Huge play on his part try and even this fight up a little bit. Blizzard coming out here from CSAC has showed up back to the fight right in the nick of time. Apostle frozen up, not going to be able to do a thing. Arjunk gets taken down. Miami University of Ohio get the first real big fight win, and they're going to start getting some percent built up on the board. It's definitely a first good initial capture. However, the, the wall there from CSAC on the May basically made it that the retake was completely solidified there for Miami of Ohio. And it's going to be up to St. Clair to try and pull this one around. Apostle's the only one with an ultimate on hand. Going to be looking for that shatter. And he's going to panic shatter. It's not even going to go off, unfortunately. He got killed before the ultimate even hit the ground, before the hammer hit the ground. So that does end up counting as a U, so it goes to waste, but nobody gets stunned. Absolute worst case scenario here for St. Clair. And perfect, of course, for Miami University of Ohio. Just burning such a valuable ultimate and continuing to build up some additional charge here. Apostle coming back with a vengeance and actually just completely snipes Jaybird with the fire strike off the hammer. So puts him in perfect position. All the Miami people kind of stuck in the corner. Saints are going to flip this around. So 88% now on the board here for Miami, but it's going to get frozen there. Apostle separated by that ice wall there from the opposing May. But everybody hanging on for dear life. Support line keeping them up just barely. Arjunk gets frozen, but it's A-OK -okay for a time being. Kabunga's going to find the first casualty, though. Apostle does get caught out by the May wall once again. Gets put right out of dodge. Going to be making their way over to the point momentarily. Saints still with the place captured. However, it's not going to be for long. More and more of the players are falling. G-Scales is going to get caught out here. That's going to be a nice little halt there from the side of... Uh, Kabunga. And now with the points ticking down and tick, tick, ticking away, I don't think there's going to be anybody from St. Clair who's able to capture this one, especially with the Dragon Strike running interference. Miami University of Ohio showing up and coming out strong here for round one. Definitely showing already why they were considered one of the higher seeds here in this tournament. They got the they got the capture point, lost it for a split second, but then basically just got it right back. So very nicely done there from Miami, Ohio. This, of course, is going to be the checkpoint for this time by capture zone right in the pagoda. 
We'll have to see if the Saints have any sort of switch up, any sort of change of strategy, possibly. They get lined up once again. Looks like it's going to be basically the same thing, with the exception of Kale, who is going to be on the Symmetra, probably looking for a teleport play of some sort. We'll ride along with them, actually, to see exactly what they're thinking. A little bit of an extra boost to get them into position as they get ready to fight here onto the point. Load up with turrets, try to solidify this location the best they possibly can. Get rid of as much utility as possible. And CSAC actually is on the Symmetra for himself. But unfortunately for him, the rest of the side of Miami University of Ohio, they got completely shut down. They got beat out to the point. Saints are going to be able to capture this first. However, can they actually fortify this up and keep it for themselves? We see him catch it first the first time by, but then they lost it within a couple seconds. So we'll have to see. Don't want to get too aggressive here. No, Apostle, he's looking for the plates. He's looking for the shatter. This time it came out, but I think it may have gotten caught up with shields. That being said, same thing for Kumbunga. His shatter did not hit the right target. So nobody is going to end up going down for this. Saints still in position on the point. And A-OK. -okay. Right along with Arjunka, who of course has that AoE healing and AoE movement speed, depending on which one he has active. This little open area, this, this being able to play here over and over again alongside the walls, is perfect for getting as much value as possible. But it does not matter, you can't heal burst damage, so the nice focus fire coming out here from the side of Miami University of Ohio just burns through the healing and it's going to take St. Clair down, get the point flipped over. However, much better for St. Clair this time by with 34% on the board. In terms of utility, it is looking beautiful right now here for Miami University of Ohio. As we see him swinging in basically right away. That was the flux coming out here from Heartache. And Kabanga's going to find himself on the board as well. Kale just gets absolutely plowed over here by Kabanga charging through. And he is just an unstoppable machine here with the ultimates in hand. They only used the one ultimate as well. Heartache's flux was the only thing I believe that was used. Maybe they also used the Symmetra shield now that I think about it. But still, two ultimates. You have three more on the board. Saints, the only one that they're going to have up is going to be the shield here from Kale, which while the shield is nice, it doesn't have that firepower that I think the Saints are really looking for moving into this next battle. Available is going to be right around the corner here with a blizzard, however, and they're going to try and teleport to the high ground. Excel fires off his own blizzard. It's going to make Saints kind of stall out. They don't want to step on it and get frozen, so they're going to have to hang on for a second. 60% complete here for the side of Miami University of Ohio. Shatter squeaks through the main wall, but it does block off a majority of the damage for St. Clair, so not too bad. Bailable nearly gets flanked. Gonna be forced into that, uh, into that ice wall form or ice block, but it's not going to uh, be able to get the amount of effectiveness that I'm thinking that they are looking for. Everybody here from Saints is just falling 81%. They need to regroup for one final push to try and get themselves here, but we do see the Miami squad. They are actually looking for an aggressive hold here. They don't want to fight on the point. They want to fight near the the uh, spawn, basically. And we do see a bit of a back and forth here. Available is going to find himself an elimination, but they need to find themselves onto the point sometime soon. G-Scales with the Diva Bomb, however. You see right in the background, we've got a double kill, but it did not matter. Red Hawks are going to hold off just long enough by fighting them in the choke point prior to the actual capture zone. Beautifully done there strategically for Miami University of Ohio with the play of the game going over to Kabunga. Where is this? Is this just where you went on an absolute tear? Didn't even necessarily need an ultimate. The Saints are just kind of lining up. Charger through. There's another one on Kale. And he's going to find himself one or two more here as the Saints support line does line up for him. So a very, very tough first game here in this series. Definitely a wake-up call compared to the first round that we did see. St. Clair getting two owed here on Nepal, but now it's going to be Saints pick for the next map coming up. And let's see, of course, once again, what do they actually have to choose from? Take a quick look once again. Of course, if you want to follow along with the rule set and the bracket at home, exclamation mark bracket will bring up the tournament bracket. So without question, game two is Escort. So of course they get the pick from Dorado, which they've played a ton. Havana, which they've played a ton. And then Watchpoint and Gibraltar, which if I were to guess, we're probably not going to see. At least in past semesters, we did not see that map like at all from either St. Clair or from any of our opponents really. We probably played it maybe once or twice all season. And it looks like that is going to be the, the case. We're not going to do Hodgepoint or Brawlter. Havana is going to be the pick for game number two. We're going to be hopping into that in just a moment's time. 
Saints already in the hot seat, of course, because with this all being best of threes, these games go quick. So we need to regroup and fire on all cylinders right off the bat here. Otherwise, uh, Miami University going to be moving forward. Saints going to be into the loser's bracket, which, of course, double elimination. You lose twice, you're done. And, of course, they want their shot at the prizing, considering not only can you get... $6,000 for your team for first place. Total of, of course, $13,500 on the line here in this tournament. Not to mention the year's supply of Cheez-Its, which I know is an absolute, it's an awesome meme, but that is actually kind of a sick prize on itself, not going to lie. So teams fighting for it. Saints definitely don't want to be done. Not here, not now, not ever. So we'll get to see in just a second. They're asking me if I'm... Sorry, there we go. There we are. Yeah, all good to go. We are hopping into game two right here, right now. And of course, we're excited for all of the action that we have this summer. This Overwatch tournament is definitely not the end of it. Be sure to join us next Friday, next week, of course, as we... Yeah, this is for next uh, next Friday coming up, as we have ourselves the Battle of Windsor. University of Windsor versus St. Clair College in OCRS Rocket League action. Going to be an exciting one, so make sure you follow us here on twitch.tv slash saintsgamingca to make sure you catch all of the matches live. Saints are going to start on the attacking side of things this time by. Let's see if they can... Just push this cart as far as possible. In the last game versus Shawnee State Bears, they didn't have to really go too far. It was just a small Sunday drive down the first initial street, and that was about it. But, of course, there's three checkpoints total that you can get here in this place. And we'll have to see how this one ends up turning up here. There we go, hopping into the swing of things. Let's ride along with main tank apostle so we get ready to breach right into the very first action. And sure enough, Miami University of Ohio with a very aggressive position to start things off. Basically meeting St. Clair right at the door. And all the Saints for the most part still on the inside. G Scale is the only one caught on the outside, but that being said, they turned their focus. That gave Nine the opportunity to take your Quinku, and Jaber goes down to Chaos. So that means the support line here for Miami University of Ohio has absolutely been flatlined, and this is going to give St. Clair the opportunity to break out and start pushing this cart. A perfect start here for St. Clair. Exactly what they are looking for. Going to be able to move this thing at least halfway down the street. Pop open the shields here, of course. Apostle on that Arisa. Basically able to make this cart a, uh, a pirate ship or a bunker. There's no Bastion, so not quite a pirate ship. But we now do see the Saints moving over to the high ground to actually meet the squad here. And Heartache just went in absolutely guns blazing onto Bailable. So this fight not looking too good here. For the Saints to start things off. Some good support coming out here from Nine, but no matter how much damage you can heal and deflect, there is no saving the outnumbered play coming out here from Miami University of Ohio. So they're going to be able to shut this one down. They get it halfway, but looks like the Saints are going to have to breach in once again. See Quinku up on the high ground, of course, being able to heal from shoot from afar. So does not mind being a little bit further away from the team. Here come the Saints once again, looking to make their way over towards this this escort point. Here comes the Flux. That's going to be G Scales catching three, lifting to the ground and slamming them down alongside the Dragon Strike coming out here from Kale. Available, however, does get taken down rather quickly. Shatter across the tank line is going to be successful there for Kabanga, but it's not going to result in an elimination, at least not as of yet. We do see Saints getting kind of blocked out here. Sound Barrier coming out here from Jaber, going to keep the rest of his squad alive. There is the Coalescence, not the Coalescence, that's the wrong character. But the Zenyat ult coming out to keep all the Saints alive as well. It outheals basically anything you could possibly do, but the May ultimate is right on point. It is freezing so many members of the St. Clair squad, and it turned it around and got the Saints three eliminated, or Saints got eliminated um, three times, essentially. Apostle frontline in here with Heartache and Kabunga, but does he have much backup? He really doesn't. He's kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place. Whichever way he turns, he is going to get smacked by something. So one minute and 30 seconds left on the clock for the Saints to try and get to the warehouse in order to get some more time on the clock. 
G-Scales is going to lead the charge we're right along here, available for just a second, of course, playing the Ash, basically a sniper of sorts of that bolt-action rifle, has a dynamite, and can summon Bob at any moment here. Bob, the big old robot, here he comes. He basically is a player in his own right, automatically shooting and holding points as he needs. So basically it completely forces the side of Miami to look for a different hiding spot. And that's a good little Dragon Strike as well there coming up from Kale. While it may not necessarily find an elimination, it knocks everybody down off the high ground, forcing it into this brawly style that we know St. Clair loves to play. Arjong going to find himself elimination. Kale's going to get on the board by taking care of Kabanga. And the Saints are on hot pursuit to try and get themselves towards this warehouse in which they're right around the corner for just a matter of dealing with Jaybird, who is absolutely killing it. So ex our Axel is still here. Trying to hang on alongside Jaybird, and they are doing a good job of just making Saints' life extremely difficult. The brawl is just getting extremely annoying here for St. Clair. G Scales in between two, trying to get as many as he can. Kabunga does go down. Kale, once again, just doing absolute work here in the back line. Where is he exactly? Just looking for anybody else, looking to pop their head. He knows the ultimate got popped here from CSAC. Of course, that was the dead eye. But now time is out of. Or time is out here for the Saints. They need somebody on this payload at all points. Otherwise, that overtime bar at the top is going to drop down. If it gets completely grayed out, that is going to be game. And it looks like Miami University of Ohio have successfully defended the point and are going to barely deny Saints a checkpoint, deny them some extra time on the clock, and deny them from pushing that escort any further down the road. So getting shut down ever so slightly. Beautifully done there from Miami University of Ohio to regroup and just deny St. Clair right on the doorstep. They did not have much further to go, but just well done zoning. The couple of the switches definitely made sense as well. I think that was Hardake who made it out with the uh, the wrecking ball, get himself back to the point as fast as possible and knock everybody away. And then it did not help too for the Saints that Excel was right there with that uh, May Blizzard as soon as... Uh, the overtime really came in to swing at things. So it's like, yeah, you could either touch the point and stop the overtime, but if you do that, I'm going to freeze you, or you just lose the game anyway. So well done on uh, Miami, Ohio's point. And now Saints going to be on the defensive side of things. We'll get to see how that ends up going for them. Gang's all here for this side of Miami University of Ohio, ready to go. Basically going to keep take their defensive lineup and try it on the offensive side of things as well. Meanwhile, Saints side of things, basically the same thing as well. Where are they hiding out, actually? Hang on a minute. Where are we here? Okay, so if this is the spawn point, we have some sneaky, sneaky Saints. Will it be successful? And Kabunga actually must have spotted it. That shield was pointed in the right direction right away. And see a sack over on the far side with the Widowmaker actually switched it up last second for a little bit of long-range sniping capabilities. And did not exactly let it go into perfect scenario there. For St. Clair, back and forth battle here. Nobody goes down. Nine is actually going to be the first casualty here. CSAC going to find the shop available. He's going to get the refrag onto him. So the one for one trade. But of course, on the defensive side of things, every elimination hurts way more compared to getting killed off on the attacking side of things. The brawl still just going down here on the card. That is going to be Quinku on the side of Miami to bring out the Amplification Matrix. And that extra damage, that extra healing is going to be enough to shatter the Saints' attack, or Saints' defense, rather. Quinku is going to get himself an elimination alongside multiple eliminations there from CS Ack. And now this cart is on the way up the street. And we know right outside the door is where things are going to get messy. But we already see Miami moving way further ahead. The shatter is right around the corner here for Kabunga, but Apostle has it as well. Definitely a game-changing ultimate. Being able to stun up multiple people if you can line them up correctly. Where is Ohio? They're actually on the high ground. They don't want anything cheeky to happen. They want to fall onto the competition instead of being sneak attacked on the ground. They're going to have to get knocked down eventually, however. And that point is actually moving pretty quickly here. Going to see here just a second. We see the glowing up area on the ground. That's going to be the shatter to get one alongside the Diva Bomb. That's heartache, however. Kale gets taken down. 
It's unfortunate, a lot of area control taken down, and Kabanga absolutely nails his shatter. Nobody home for the Saints anymore, completely taken down. 2-0, Miami University of Ohio. Excel got to find himself the play of the game for this one. Is it near the end here? Or was this initial? Oh, this is on when they were on the defensive side of things. Yes, this blizzard caught basically three to four members on the side of St. Clair, forced them to go away while he may have only found the one elimination for himself. It really allowed the Red Hawks to turn that fight around when it was looking like it was going to be a Saints favored fight. So definitely well played there from Miami University of Ohio. Congratulations on your victory and continue forward and best of luck when moving forward in this, uh, this upper bracket. With that being said, we're going to take a look at this bracket actually because the Saints are not done yet. This is double elimination. So we do get knocked down into the loser's bracket or the lower bracket, depending on how you want to call it here. Red Ox are going to go move over and play UCSC. So let's take a look and see if we can see our opponents yet. Doesn't look like it'll show us here just yet who we play. So going to have to hang on with us for just a little bit. Next match is scheduled for 7.55. However, we could very well run into a situation like we did in game number one where not all the matches were done right away, so they held us up a little bit to make sure everybody played at the same time, which, I mean, is fair, but it does mean we have some pretty long breaks here. But this does work out for the Saints, too. I mean, they had themselves, like, a really, really, really strong and decisive win, but they also now just got slapped in the face with a very, very decisive loss. So now... Take this opportunity. Take these 15 minutes or 20 minutes, whatever it ends up happening to be, and get themselves to regroup, go back to the drawing board. What went wrong here? Was there any sort of picks that happened? Was it just mispositioning, or was it missed alt man management? Depending on what it happens to be. Of course, I know Coach Q is in there as well, keeping everybody, uh, not everybody in line, but keeping an eye on everything and whatnot. So we'll have to see what happens going into this next one. And I'm looking forward to seeing who our next opponent will be. As soon as I happen to know what that opponent is, I will definitely update the scoreboard to show or update the stream to let you know exactly who it is that we're going to be up against. Just quickly going to adjust some things. Now, of course, we are now one and one here in this tournament. Knocked down early, but if the Saints want to... I get themselves into the prize thing. They now took the hard road, as we now have to go through many, many more losers bracket matches, and the pressure's on too. Lose one more time, and that's it. But of course, big thank yous everybody for tuning into this match, constantly supporting the Overwatch squad or supporting us here at the St. Clair Saints Varsity Esports team. Always a pleasure broadcasting the matches here for you, and looking forward to many, many more, especially one day. Being able to do it from our esports arena of course you probably saw some of these during the break but these are some renderings of what our esports arena is in theory going to look like i know i personally cannot wait to start broadcasting from the arena here on the stage like you see here being able to actually tune in of course you'll still be able to tune in from the twitch side of things if you can't make it in person but being able to watch it live on campus will be absolutely fantastic as well so definitely Thank you for being fan or thank you for supporting us. Thank you for being fans and looking forward to one day maybe having you all in person at the same stage. And of course, before we do close on out here, if you are still looking to maybe become a player here for the St. Clair Saints varsity sports team, while a lot of our teams are starting to kind of get rounded up with their rosters, there is still room and time to put your application in, of course, St. Clair Saints.ca slash join and send in the application. Let us know that you're interested in playing, and if there's an opportunity to get you on board, we definitely will. And that isn't just necessarily for players as well. If you are interested in working production here for the broadcast, as much as I love just uh, making everybody constantly listen to me, see my face and whatnot, this gets exhausting. I would love to actually have a team again, once again for this semester coming up. So whether you want to be an observer, commentator, or run the stream itself, go onto the Discord and make sure you send me a message or ping me in the general chat or, or something. 
let me know you want to get involved and we can look to get you some experience regardless of how experienced you are we can definitely level you up with that being said next matchup for the saints is scheduled for another 10 minutes from now give or take a couple of minutes depending on the to's discretion but we're not quite done yet we're going to be hopping down into the losers bracket very very shortly and we'll be right back with some more saints action here in the cheez it's collegiate invitational <laughs> 